the, the team assembled. I managed to figure out my situation here. Do you, can you hear me a little bit better? Absolutely. Yeah, you guys look better too. Okay. Um, shall we? Shall we roll? Yes. Okay. Good. All right. So I will call the June twenty third, twenty twenty meeting of the uh, Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeals uh, to order. Um, If you can find the agenda here. I think that the first item on the agenda is simply to approve the minutes from the uh, from the May 26th, uh, 2020 meeting. Uh, folks have had a chance to review those. Any thoughts, suggestions on the meeting minutes before we seek a formal motion to approve? No. I, I move that we approve the minutes. Very good. Do we have a second? Second. Was that Joe? Yes. Good. Um, any comments on the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor? Uh, Mike Valencourt in favor? Aaron Mosier in favor? Kevin Just in favor? Mike Tatama Wieland in favor? Joe in favor. in favor? And I think I heard Colin uh, in favor as well, right? Yep, yes. good thumbs up. Okay, excellent. Uh, hold on one more. Matthew Caton and I would abstain as I did not attend apparently last meeting. It's, it's, sorry, Matt. When, when I don't see your smiling face, I forget to, to include you. I'll try, I'm going to keep my my uh, my mouse arrow on your on your little phone symbol down here, though, so I remember that you're you're still here. Okay, excellent. Okay, very good. So uh, the uh, minutes from the May 26, 2020 meeting are approved. Uh, on to new business. Here the request of Spencer Christie, owner of the property at 1084 Sawyer Road, map R4, lot 46, to expand a non-conforming single family dwelling based on section 19-4-3.B.4 of the zoning ordinance. Um, Mr. Christie, thank you for joining us. Before we hear further from you, uh, I would ask uh, Ben McDougall to, to comment on the uh, application, give us a, a little bit of uh, a briefing on that. Sure. Uh, Mr. Christie came to me several months ago uh, talking about doing an addition on his house. Logistically, the way his house lays out, it makes sense to do the addition uh, closer to the front of the house than the rear of the house going uh, parallel with the road. The house, uh, I believe, was built roughly 100 years ago prior to any setbacks existing. And it's, uh, I believe, 16 feet from the front property line. So what he'd like to do is, is maintain that setback, not get any closer to his front property line, but expand his existing non-conforming house in the manner shown in the application. It's a conforming lot in the RA zone. And that, that was a question of mine, which zone it was in, but it's in the RA. Okay. That's right. And is, is, is that the property across from the, across from the old Christmas tree farm? It's adjacent to the Cox property, is that right? Yeah, so we're, we're next to the Cox farm, and I think okay. the Christmas tree farm used to be across the street, correct? Yep. That's right, back in the day. Yeah, okay. I, I bike by your place all the time. Oh, excellent. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, good. Uh, Ben, any, um, did we hear anything? I, I, maybe I'm a little, I guess I'm a little early on in the sequence, but we, have we heard anything from uh, members of the, the public or abutters or anything? No, I don't have any correspondence. Okay, no comments. All right, well, Mr. Christie, we turn it over to you then to uh, offer an explanation on, on the application. Uh, I think we've got a, a good deal of information that you've already submitted, but any comments that you want to make, we'd be uh, interested to hear those. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, essentially, what we're looking at is to, you know, from what you can see from the plans, is just a bump out from uh, to make a first floor master bedroom bathroom. Uh, we plan on staying in the house for a long time. And, uh, you know, as we may get older or, you know, kind of make a new bedroom and do it on the first floor rather than having to constantly go up and down stairs. 
Um, I tore my ACL a couple of years ago and our stairs look like they're from the 1920s because of how steep they are. Um, so it would be nice to have just a little outlet um, that's just off of the main house. Um, and it's just obviously too close to the road. Um, my wife and uh, our son, our son is 21 months. So we, uh, we all live in the house together and looking to just make it from a two bedroom, two bath to a three bedroom, three bath. Many of us live the 1920s experience. So uh, <laughs> and, uh, that's a, that's a Cape Elizabeth thing. Yeah. Um, questions uh, from the board for the applicant uh, and or, and or for Ben. Um, I, I guess one thing I wanted to, to address quickly, and it looks like this is all set, um, Ben, but just a quick confirmation that the, the sewage disposal is, is good to go for the expansion. It is. Uh, a, new, a new septic system was installed a few years ago, uh, three bedroom septic. I inspected it and approved it. Okay. Other questions for uh, Mr. Christie and for, for uh, Ben McDougall? Uh, I have a, Mr. Chairman, I have a question. A uh, quick one for Ben first. I just want to confirm that the setback here is 40 feet. The road front setback is 40 feet. That's correct. Okay. Um, so my, my question for Mr. Christie then is just to confirm that this new addition is actually going to be uh, fully within the setback area, area, is that correct? Yes, so given from the front, yeah, it'll be fully in the setback area. What, um, what, what uh, uh, Ben alluded to some consideration of, of putting um, the addition somewhere else. What, what, what did you, what kind of things did you consider to keep it out of the um, setback area? So originally our idea was to, there was already an addition put on the house, I think in 2000, what you can see from the elevation, um, kind of what goes off onto the deck, essentially the sunroom off of the kitchen area. Originally I had planned to maybe put an, uh, a two bedrooms or one bedroom, one bath above where that sunroom is now and raise up the roof and do it that way. And um, it just wasn't really feasible. It was just gonna be a, a big intrusion on our um, current kind of lifestyle. And it would also kind of block out the bedroom that's in there now because the master bedroom gets a lot of natural sunlight and it overlooks the backyard. So it would kind of make like a, a dead space in the middle. Um, so it just wasn't really feasible. And we talked to the contractor and he mentioned that a bump out on the first floor would be much, uh, much easier and much more efficient. Would, it, uh, would there have, one more question? I mean, would there have been a great deal of extra expense or was it more just your, your perceived practicality about uh, keeping it uh, where you're proposing it now? I think it probably would have been more expensive um, but both the quotes we got were only probably about a 15% difference in the initial quotes we got for that bedroom versus one off the side of the house. Um, so I think it would have been more expensive, but not like, um, not insanely so. Thank you. Sure. Um, I, I had, am I on mute? So I'll, I, I have just a quick question. It looked to me, and I, this may be me misinterpreting the plans, like uh, as if there is a uh, portico on the front of the house. Is that existing, or am I am I looking at the wrong dimension on that? Um, I might need a brief description as to what. Uh, so if I'm looking at, I'm looking at the proposed site plan. Yes. And there's a uh, front perspective and a rear perspective. On that front perspective, the the front door looks as if there's a, a you know, overhang portico entryway. So that's currently at the house. That's currently at the house. And is the 16 feet setback to that, or is it to the front door? I can't quite. I just want to make sure I have the plane right on that. That's a great question. I would say the 16 feet is to not the portico, but the actual house itself. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, <clears throat> they're showing 11 feet to the portico and 15 feet 
to the existing house and 11 feet to the existing portico. Okay, so it, it's 16 feet for the addition. It's certainly not increasing the nonconformity. Uh, right. Okay. Great, thank you. Sure. Additional questions? Hearing none, uh, and, and from what I can observe, we don't have other members of the public, other abutters uh, here on the, on the Zoom call. Uh, if there is anybody, then please speak up uh, so we can hear your, your input. But hearing and seeing nobody, I think we can move on to the, the board consideration of the application unless there are any last minute questions for, for uh, Mr. Christie. Hearing none, on to board consideration. What, uh, what are everybody's thoughts? Um, really, I'm, I'm, I'm supportive of this. I, might, I had the same question that was addressed right at the very beginning with the septic to make sure that was adequate for three bedrooms. But it, to me, it looks well thought out, well considered. It doesn't increase the nonconformity. Um, to me, it, it, it falls within the spirit of this section, and I'm supportive of it. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, I, 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 I may be a minor, I'm likely to be a minority here, but I do have a very different take on this. Um, and again, I mean, Kevin recognized the language of the, of the policy that we're supposed to interpret, which says that in no case shall a structure be enlarged so as to increase its nonconformity. In my view, when you place a new addition in, directly in this, the setback area, that is increasing the nonconformity. When you go from, say, 500 square feet or so in the nonconformity area to about 850 square feet, approximately, I think, that to me increases the nonconformity. And um, I, what I, what I'm gathering, people are interpreting the statute to mean that as long as you don't go further beyond the, the original encroachment, that that somehow doesn't increase the, the conformity. But I, I think that's an extremely narrow application of this language. And when you're dealing with, um, you know, exceptions, to zone, which this is an exception, um, those exceptions should be narrowly construed. And I think we're, we're seem to be interpreting, the suggested interpretation is really kind of a broad interpretation. I don't really think it, it fits the the precise language, which is not to increase um, uh, the non the nonconformity. I should add, um, I did um, look around at other um, uh, other ordinances dealing with a similar issue, and just just so I can get an idea of how other municipalities and agencies handle it. And there's a huge variety. Almost every entity does it differently, but they. But where they want to confine it to, you know, the existing encroachment, they, they're very specific. There are a couple of statutes I found that say that. They say it very specifically, but the, the, the bulk of the this, this statutes are kind of in line with what we're saying here, which is not to increase the nonconformity. And, you know, there's examples out there that I've seen that does support what I'm saying. I'm not asking you it's not presidential, obviously, or anything like that. But... I'm, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm off base in saying that we really should have a narrower interpretation. Now, that doesn't mean that the applicant couldn't get this approved. I think the appropriate way to go would be to seek a variance because I don't see in my estimation that this is con in conformity to coin for a term. It's not in conformity with, with the zoning ordinance. All right, well, po point, uh, certainly point taken, Joe, and I, I see Ben uh, raising his hand. So ben, ben, your thoughts on this? Well, lucky for us, we don't have to uh, interpret what increasing the nonconformity is because we have it defined very specifically in, in the definitions. And, uh, and it does say that as long in this case, as long as the structure isn't getting closer to the front property line, that it's not an increase in nonconformity. So um, 
so we have we do have that specifically defined for this situation. And Joe, I, I, I share your concerns. I actually think that there are there are other um, there are other aspects of the uh, application process of this section and, and of the zoning code that, that kind of deal with the concern that again I, I share with you about it being too big. You know, certainly the sep the septic system you know it's designed for three bedrooms so you know uh, the hypothetical applicant not not speaking directly to you here mr chris but in a similar situation you couldn't build a, a seven bedroom home um through this uh type of, of scenario because you would then need that variance to have that um you know probably larger septic uh installed so there there are other guardrails i think that you know help us uh look at some of these applications and, and assess how they uh, fit within, you know, the broader context of the zoning code. Yeah, and we, anytime, any, anytime we have these, this, this issue usually comes up because it does, it, it feels like an increase of nonconformity. We're putting a huge mass in the setback, but this is basically what this section of the ordinance was designed for. And that's why this section was written this way and uh, and then we have the specific definition of increase in nonconformity that allows us to to use this. Matthew, uh, thank you, Chair. I have a follow up for Ben and also for Joe. Ben, can you direct us to the section in the uh, definition so we can follow along as to the defined term that you're referring to? That's page uh, page seventeen of the zoning ordinance. Uh, uh, you know, increase in nonconformity of a structure. Any change in a structure or property which causes further deviation from the dimensional standard creating the nonconformity, such as but not limited to reduction in water body, tributary stream, and lot coverage, or increase in height of a structure property changes or structure expansions which either meet the dimensional standard or or which cause no further increase in the linear extent of the nonconformance of the existing structure shall not be considered to increase the nonconformity so on that issue on the side setback of 25 feet suppose that the proposed extension went to the left on my drawing and actually goes into that side aspect. Uh, that would, so there would be two nonconformity issues, one in the side setback as well as the front. So on one argument, it would go into the side setback, which means it's still a nonconformity, but it doesn't uh, uh, um, cause an issue with the front setback. Do you follow that, Ben? Yeah, I, I, I believe it respects the side setback and okay. does not encroach on the side setback. Uh, over to you, Joe. Did you get a chance to uh, consider what Ben referred to on that uh, definition? Do you still have a concern? Uh, in my initial reading, I think yeah, I, I think um, I would agree with Ben's interpretation of, of what this is. I mean, I was kind of surprised to find the definitional section, so I'll admit to some embarrassment about that. But um, it does seem to it does seem to say say what Ben says it says. So. And by the way, um, I was not looking at that section either. I was looking under the uh, end section, uh, but it's, it's a, well, look at that. It's on the I section. So um, me too there, Joe. Right. Uh, okay, that, that answers my questions. Gentlemen, this is a collaborative process. And, and so it's, it, we want everybody's input and questions and thoughts. So uh, um, there's, there's no reason to, to apologize for but all questions are good questions, right? Isn't that what we, what we've learned over the years? Joe, I had the same issue when I first joined the board. Sitting <laughs> uh, other, other thoughts, comments. I mean, I'm, uh, I will jump on the, uh, the Kevin bus, so to speak. Um, and, and I think that was a, a good dialogue, a good conversation about, you know, the, the, uh, specific, uh, provisions in our ordinance and, uh, um, with respect to what Joe raised and, and with respect to what Matthew raised, there's also an, uh, a for example provision in that definition, which is helpful, which makes it very clear that, uh, that, that, that there's no increase so long as the required setback is, is the same 
uh, for any for any expansion. So I think that's helpful for us. But again, returning to the to the application and to Kevin's comments, looks like everything's in order from my perspective, uh, and I'm prepared to to vote for um, approving the application. But I'd like to hear from others. I would tend to agree. Um, uh, one of the issues sometimes we find is that to the greatest practical extent, practicable extent, um, and when you're looking at adding into a house, only certain areas make sense. Yeah, from looking at the overall plan, oh, why don't you add in the back? Well, because of a flow inside the house or the expense of redesigning every room to get around around that. And if it makes sense from, from the applicant's design process to put the, put the, the addition there, that it, then that fits for me. Yeah, I, I, uh, I'm in support of this. I think the, the ordinance um, it makes it really easy for us in, in defining what we are to consider uh, when, um, when determining whether or not it meets the setback to the greatest practical extent. Um, and the application uh, describes exactly how it, how, it, um, how it meets those criteria, the size of the log slope of the land, the potential for, for soil erosion, Location of other structures on the property and adjacent properties, the location of the septic system, uh, and the type and amount of vegetation to be removed, and the impact on views. And I, I, I think this is, uh, you know, as much as a slam dunk as uh, as any of the projects we've we've seen come under this section. So, uh, anyways, I, I I support this application. All right, good. Well, I'm, get, I'm going to move forward then, and um, I would entertain a motion to approve the request of Spencer Christie, owner of the property at 1084 Sawyer Road, map R4, lot 46, to expand a single family dwelling based on section 19-4-3.B.4 of the zoning ordinance. So moved. We have Aaron on the motion. Do we have a second? Second on the second. All in on the second. Excellent. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, Mike Valancourt in favor? Aaron Moser in favor? Joe Barbieri in favor? All in favor? Kevin in favor? Michael Tadema Wieland in favor? Matthew Caton in favor? Excellent. Uh, then the, the motion carries uh, unanimously. We will move on to the findings of fact. Proposed finding, finding of fact one, the property is a non-conforming lot in the RA zone. There is an existing single family dwelling on the property that is also non-conforming. Proposed finding of fact two, the existing house built in the 1920s doesn't meet the required front setback. The owner would like to expand the house without getting closer to the front property line. Proposed additional findings of fact. Proposed additional finding of fact one. The Zoning Board of Appeals has considered the size of the lot, the slope of the land, the potential for soil erosion, the location of other structures on the property and on adjacent properties, the location of the septic system, and the impact on views. Proposed additional finding of fact two. The proposed structure will not increase the nonconformity of the existing structure. Proposed additional finding of fact three, the proposed structure is in compliance with the setback requirement to the greatest practical extent. And proposed additional finding of fact four, the building reconstruction meets the setback to the greatest practical extent based on the criteria in section 19-4-3.b.2 in the zoning ordinance. Uh, I'd entertain a motion to approve the uh, proposed findings of fact and proposed additional findings of fact. Uh, we oftentimes have some friendly amendments to, to that. So Matthew, why don't you lead off before we get to the motion? Thank you, Chair. Uh, I, I query whether we should be referring to the enlargement uh, provision under paragraph four. Um, I know that's, that's elsewhere. It talks about the matter before the board at the very top of that um, um, findings of fact, but we'll query whether we should also refer to it here as a standalone finding of fact. And I 
that's my point is whether we should include a paragraph that talks about a finding of fact dealing with the enlargement and what we just talked about with the um the setback issue well matt are you referring to the 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 matter before the board is 194-3.b.4 and we're referencing b.2 in the additional findings of fact well um yes i'm not troubled with the b, b. point two uh because in the paragraph four is a cross reference to the um b point two reference i'm fine there i'm just thinking that the gateway door that we have to that we should include is the paragraph that talks about enlargement the which addresses joe's point as well as the talk uh, the, the point that uh, been raised in the definitions and, and that um, is the it, it we we can skin this cat a different way but that is the the motion we just approved was, was to approve this based on 194-3.b.4 and then we go to b2 for the greatest practical extent analysis so we can we can build that out a little bit if the board feels it's, it's important but i feel as though the the, the proposed findings adequately address those issues because again, the motion we just approved was on B.4. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Do yeah, I, I'm sorry to I pick up on that, but um, having been chastened now that this project by definition is non-conforming, is there really any need for us to consider these other criteria which only seem like soil erosion and septic system and like which seem to only come into play if you have a structure that um potentially expands the non-conformity i mean if, it, if it's not it's not conforming is there any i mean if it if it if it doesn't increase the non-conformity is there any reason then to consider any of these other criteria well, this deals with enlargement and the building is very clearly being enlarged. And, and so thus the consideration under sub four, if I understand your, collect, your, your, your question correctly, Joe. Um, well, in the, in the, yeah, I'm sorry. I mean, I know this is right. It could be overly technical, but it's a little, maybe I'm struggling a little bit in, in on, under sub four enlargement. Um, it's the first sentence says any non-conforming structure, uh, blah, 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 uh, essentially is approvable as long as it will not create or expand any non-conformities. Enlargement of a non-conforming structure not in compliance with these limitations may be permitted, provided that such enlargement is in compliance with the setback requirement to the great extent practical as determined by the Board of Appeals. And then the following section, we have to consider these other matters uh, when you consider greater practical extent, such as foundation and the like. I guess I'm saying as long as it meets the first sentence, uh, which apparently it does, that is, it doesn't increase any, or expand any nonconformities, it doesn't seem to be any reason to consider whether it meets it to the greatest extent practical because it, it's not expanding any nonconformities. Now, if you, if you read line, line two of that provision, so, it, so I'll start right from the top, enlargement, sub four. Any non-conforming structure which is located closer than the required setback from the property line may be in, enlarged as long as the area being enlarged meets the setback requirements. Well, the area being enlarged does not meet the setback requirements, which is what requires us to go through this analysis. Okay. I, I think that's okay. right. <laughs> Folks, okay. I'm gotcha. right, right, right. wrong, but I think that's, that, I think that's why we have to jump through these these few hoops on the okay. uh, on the findings of fact to make sure that we've we've adequately addressed the uh, ordinance and the application okay i'm satisfied okay that being said where there we, we i just read into the record the proposed findings of fact the proposed additional findings of fact where there are, do we need to twist the dials on those um, in anybody's opinion before we go ahead and entertain a formal motion to approve? Uh, this is Matt, the answer is no, I'm fine. Okay. Um, I, I'll bring up the, the one I always bring up uh, on the findings of fact. This is a conforming lot, correct? It's just the structure that's non-conforming? You're still on your pen. 
Right. So we need to we need, we need to correct that in the in the first. That makes sense to you, Ben. Yes. Yeah. That's that's a typo. It's a conforming lot with a non-conforming structure. Okay. Okay. So if we proposed finding a fact one, the property is a conforming lot uh, with a non-conforming structure. Uh, this, the property is a conforming lot located in the RA zone period. There is an existing single family dwelling on the property that is non-conforming period. Correct. Makes sense? It's very, it's very rare that we get these on a conforming lot, but that is correct. Okay. Oh, good, good call, Kevin. You bring it up every time and you're right once. <laughs> <laughs> it has to happen eventually. Other, uh, other, other uh, friendly amendments, other friendly suggestions there. Okay. All right. I, I, I'm seeing everybody just sitting stock still, you're just poised to approve the, the proposed findings and the proposed additional findings of fact. So I would entertain a motion to approve the, uh, the proposed findings of fact with the, the, the change that I just noted and the proposed additional findings of fact as, as read earlier. So moved. Kevin's, Kevin's got the motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Colin. Colin is on it on the second. Okay, great. Uh, all in favor, Mike Valencourt in favor. I saw Aaron Moses in favor. I see Aaron's hand. Joe Barbieri in favor. Joe, Kevin. Kevin in favor. Matthew in, in favor. Uh, Michael Tadema Wheeland in favor. I'll pull up the rear. Colin in favor. Yeah, great. All right. Uh, all in favor, the uh, proposed findings of fact and the pro proposed additional findings of fact pass uh, unanimously. Um, Mr. Christie. Thank you for uh, for dealing with us this evening, and and uh, good luck with your expansion. I hope you get it done quickly. And uh, from what I've seen, all the construction workers are still out there staying busy. So maybe Thanksgiving time, you'll have it all done, right? Yeah, maybe Thanksgiving 2021. You know, if it gets too crazy. But thanks a lot. I appreciate all your help, and especially Ben for uh, for helping me out through the process. Much yeah, happy to help. And you, I'm sure you'll be talking more to Ben as you go through it. But uh, thank you. Excellent. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right, folks, I, I think that does it for this evening. Uh, and anything that we're looking at on tap for July, are we thinking that we may end up back in chambers or is that still a big question mark? We're not gonna be in chambers in July. And Kevin said that he saw something that said it's looking like September. I, I hadn't heard that yet, but that he, he's, he's probably right. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be on Zoom for July. Definitely, there's a couple accessory dwelling units that are kicking the tires. So I, I think we will have a meeting. Nothing nothing big on the horizon though. Okay, great. I like I like to say my favorite part of that meeting was Aaron making a motion while in motion. <laughs> <laughs> Multitasking. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I like that. I do have a question as to who actually seconded the um, original motion to approve the request. I did, Colin. Colin, okay, thank you. I got to think that's right because he was like the official seconder tonight. So okay, I'll, that's what I thought, but I just the wanted vault, to I think. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I got both tonight. <laughs> all right, well, well, thank you all. Uh, thanks, Ben, for your work and Carmen for your work as well. And uh, yeah, we'll be back at it uh, potentially in July. Happy July 4th, all. Okay. Take care, guys. See ya.